Um, we are on historical grounds at uh, Louvestein Castle. It's a castle already for 700 years. It's always military, uh, so it's uh, a perfect place to talk about peace and uh, freedom and justice, actually. And the first part of the program is on the exchange, the relations between academic research and uh, practitioners in the field and, and NGOs uh, in the Netherlands, but also in affected areas. So my name is Janina Surmont. Um, I'm a member of the board of the Foundation for Peace Studies. And in the next hour, we will be examining um, the question of the impact of research in practice. Um, so what stood out to me the most is, again, the fact that peace is getting left behind a bit. Um, and I think that's a bit worrisome. If, if I think about the great names of this field, I think of peace researchers. And in our attempt to be relevant, to also get funding, we focus on these very current day events and not really these more philosophical normative questions. And I think that is where we are going to have to watch out in the future. That we do maybe try to reclaim that space and reassess what this larger goal is within our research. And sometimes it can be a frustrating looking at the past and see all the conflicts all over the time and uh, coming up uh, uh, again and again and again. So, uh, uh, But to understand the process, you have to look into the history to... Um, to do analysis, uh, to better understand it, and then maybe to uh, achieve a better future. There are many museums about uh, war, but there are little museums about peace. Then there needs to be a development of theory, of course, um, and, and that, that keeps up with trends around peace and conflict in, in, in today's world. Um, but at the same time, theory is often so abstract that it is far, too far away from the daily practice of practitioners in, in uh, uh, non-government organizations like CARE. Um, so what we, what we would need is um, a more direct link between the daily issues that we uh, are faced with in our work and, and what, what is being developed at a higher theoretical level. So, and that link, I find, is often missing. Is that link missing in your practice as well? Ooh, this is a, <laughs> a tricky question. I would, I'm, I'm tempted to say, uh, uh, no, that is not missing, because I have the amb ambition as a researcher to indeed en engage with practice, and well, Case knows about that. Uh, um, it would be very nice if we could also explore, well, how can uh, you also introduce something like that for practi practitioners, where peace building, uh, education becomes part and parcel uh, of the training packages that is available for practitioners. And so, well, I, uh, I've been working quite a lot in, uh, in northern Uganda on land tenure registration programs. And what we try to do there is uh, conduct research and at the same time try to think of how can we translate this to the experiences of the practitioners. And we took those team members along to reflect on these issues. And I think we managed indeed to get them convinced of the need to take properly into account how their interventions impact on the relationships between leaders, between uh, community representatives and authorities and uh, their citizens. What I miss is a link on how, how can I use that, the sort of solutions that, that might be coming from th theory or might be um, got together from uh, from your field research and, and, and be brought to a somewhat more theoretical level, how can then I again translate it back into the, the practice of the work that I'm doing in Eastern Congo or in Yemen or in Afghanistan?
Um, and I decided to choose a somewhat unorthodox topic uh, for my master's thesis, um, uh, which centered around wildlife conservation in an East African uh, nature conservancy. So I've been there myself. Um, let's see. Well, let me just start with the what. So what did I research? It is a, a multi-land use area um, where the factors of wildlife conservation, uh, wildlife tourism uh, and human development uh, basically intersect and compete in the same area. But it basically boiled down um, to a situation where both parties were very um, unnuanced toward each other and also in the stories they told about the other party. Yeah, it's, it, it also comes back in a lot of discussions, but uh, the ambiguity or the unclarity in governance um, and the, also the centralized nature of governance um, really contributed to this conflict, right? Uh, organizations like UNESCO, uh, international conservation agencies, also our own uh, WNF or, or any kind of organization need to be careful when administrating these statuses, these approaches uh, to conservation areas worldwide. Thesis. Uh, but I'm Aleri and I was studying on the conflict resolution and governance program at UVA. Um, and my thesis was looking at um, the revealed emotions of the British Libyan diaspora. Um, so the goal of the research was to capture the complexity within the stories of the Libyan revolution. So the research was motivated by trying to produce this uh, rigorous and honest account of that experience. And I conducted 15 narrative interviews with members of the diaspora uh, just in the UK. The hope for even when there is such heartbreak and even when violence continues to come up, it was these stories of pride and wonder in what the future of Libya could be that kept bringing up these um, seeds of hope for the future. And because what was coming through in the stories now is that the diaspora uh, very much felt that they have this hope and they want to be part of finding uh, and building a secure and peaceful Libya, but they're not wanted now by um, Libyans in Libya. And so when thinking now about policies, how do we even fit in, um, in this case, the diaspora in conversations and policies surrounding the future of Libya? Um, yeah, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Izzy van Une. I am an anthropologist, cultural anthropologist. I did my master's at the University of uh, Utrecht. Um, and I also did a minor in conflict studies at the UVA. So, I, so yeah, my research was in Colombia. Um, I looked at the experiences of reintegration of ex-combatants of the FARC-EP. Often um, reintegration or DDR is really approached from a policy perspective, from a macro securities perspective, or from an economic perspective. Um, Ex-combatants themselves are often portrayed as um, security threats. Um, I'm not sure which field everyone here is from, but I'm sure you've heard about ex talking about ex-combatants as spoilers to uh, peace or a peace process, and maybe DDR itself as spoiler management. Um, but my argument is that to improve policy, uh, we actually need to step away from policy for a little bit. Um, I looked at reintegration at this nexus of uh, context, identity, and also of past, present, and future. For a lot of them, the return to arms is not about an ideological conviction about the necessity of armed struggle, but it's at least partly about the search for ontological security. So going back to a world that they know and where they feel capable. So I think it's really crucial to look at, just to, to deeply look at these um, cultural psychological processes from the moment that a DDR or reintegration policy is designed. And that's why I think it's also crucial that more research is done along these lines.
Um, ladies and gentlemen in the room and online, I have the honor to introduce the next part, uh, well, this part, the award ceremony. This is the 13th time that the Foundation for Peace Studies award, awards the prize. And now, uh, in this very significant and, as we learned, symbolic location, Slot Lewestein. The aim of the Visions of Peace uh, Thesis Prize is to stimulate research on peace and security and to give recognition to the best master thesis in this field. In particular, we hope to inspire next generations of academics, policy makers, practitioners and citizens to develop their own visions on peace. So what did we do with the entries? We received 18 theses. That's a bit less than in previous years. But the topics um, and, the con and the disciplines covered were absolutely as interesting and as uh, informative. The submissions came from uh, six different universities in the Netherlands. We nom nominated these theses for their rigorous and insightful treatment of their research subjects, their contributions to their respective fields, and their furthering of our shared understanding of the conditions of and challenges to peace. So congratulations to you all. The jury has decided that the 2021-21 thesis prize Visions on Peace goes to Dan Dura. And there we have the prize, which will be given by Gijsbert. Well, not by you, you're the... Okay. Yes. 